Hey there. I had a great conversation a few weeks ago with family friend who was helping her uh, niece, grandniece, I forget, uh, with the SAT. Uh, maybe it was the ACT. I forget that too. It's been a couple of weeks, like I said. But the topic of the um, so-called quarter point penalty came up because it used to be that whenever you guessed wrong on the SAT for a question, they would give you a minus one fourth point. In other words, you, you'd get a point for every correct answer, but you'd get a negative quarter point for every wrong answer. And recently the SAT um, changed so that it no longer um, assesses that penalty point against you. And in that way, it's become more like the ACT. The ACT has always been, look, your score is just how many you get right. And you can guess all you like, and it doesn't matter because we're not gonna give you a minus one quarter point. And an interesting point about this is that I think a big reason why the SAT stopped assessing the penalty point is that people were up in arms about it. They thought, well, it's not fair to give me a minus one fourth for making a bad guess. You shouldn't do that. And so the SAT, um, I guess, agreed with that and took it away. And now there's no difference between the ACT and SAT in this respect. Um, but I'm here to try to convince you that, that although the SAT did this because of public outcry, it was actually the wrong choice. And in fact, the outcry was misguided. Um, I wanna convince you that if you ever have the opportunity to choose to take a, a test that has penalty points and to avoid a test that doesn't have penalty points, you should take the one with the penalty points. That's good for you. So, um, to try to convince you of this, let me let me start by um, let me start by throwing out a kind of a, uh, a kind of a ridiculous, uncommon scenario. Okay, let's say that we have two people, Jim and Sue, and they're taking some test, and neither Jim nor Sue knows anything that they're supposed to know for this test. They both deserve a zero. Okay, and let's just say that they're going to take um, uh, a one hundred question test that's multiple choice with five answer choices uh, per question. Okay. So uh, let's say Jim, who knows he knows nothing, right? Uh, doesn't even, I mean, maybe he reads the test, maybe he doesn't, but he turns in a blank answer sheet because he doesn't, you know, whatever. And then let's say that Sue, uh, who also knows nothing, um, chooses randomly from among the answers, okay? Um, I, I think we could agree they both deserve the same score because they've both demonstrated no knowledge at all. But um, if, if Sue's, and remember Sue's bubbling in, you know, 100 answers, uh, if there's no penalty for guessing, then Sue on average is going to get 20 points on this test because she can't help but randomly get 20 questions right out of 100 if she's guessing and there's five choices per answer. She's just going to, you know, naturally get lucky occasionally. Um, and I would argue that's, that's not really fair. Like Sue should get the same score as Jim. They've both demonstrated the same amount of knowledge. And <clears throat> That's where the idea of the quarter point penalty comes in. If we award Sue a point for every right answer, but we award her a, or award is the wrong word, but if we give her a negative quarter point for every wrong answer, then Sue will get the zero she deserves. I mean, I mean, this is a harsh example, but like that's how it plays out, right? She answers 100 questions, 20 of them are right, plus 20 points, 80 of them are wrong, minus 80 times a quarter, that's minus 20, that averages out to a zero, and now the test is fair for Jim and Sue. Okay. I mean, that's not the strongest argument in the world, but I just want to kind of lay the groundwork for like, there is a fairness argument there. But the, uh, that's not, the, the fact that, that a penalty point makes it fairer is not the strongest reason why you should prefer such a test. The, the strongest reason why you should prefer such a test comes from a much more common scenario that people don't think about very often, okay? Consider this, let's say you are taking a 100 question test and let's say you just finished question 80 and you realize there's one minute left, what should you do? And here's the thing, if there is no quarter point penalty, then the best thing for you to do is to guess on the remaining 20 questions, like bubble in 20 answers real quick because you're gonna get a couple of them right by random chance and you want those points. Whereas if there is a quarter point penalty, it's no longer in your best interest to go randomly bubbling, bubbling in stuff because the points you get from the right answers are gonna get counterbalanced by the negative points you get from the wrong answers. In effect, bubbling in at the end of the, of the test becomes just kind of a waste of time. It's not gonna affect your score either way. Like it's not bad to do it, but it's not good either. So you wouldn't do it, which to my mind, oh, well, that's, that's good because I don't, like if, if I'm taking this test, right? I don't wanna be, thinking about the importance of stopping my work when there's a minute left and doing this sort of 
you know, test gamesmanship thing of bubbling in the remain. Like that's, that's silly. That's um, tests like that, that, re that in effect reward people who go doing test gamesmanship like that. That's part of the reason why the test prep industry exists in the first place. And I mean, I'm a test prep professional, but I got to say, that's a bad reason. Like I'm, I'm opposed to that. Um, I don't want people to have to come pay me to get advised to do crazy stuff like that. I want to, I want people to come to me so I can teach them to get good at whatever the test is trying to test, not this crazy gamesmanship. That's just, that's just silly. Um, and so if we, if we look at the, um, if we look at that same scenario in a, in a different context, let's say that, again, I'm, I'm the person I've, I've answered 80 questions. There's a minute left. Um, what do I do? Well, if that quarter point penalty is in place, it doesn't, I don't change my behavior in any way because the only way that I can reliably increase my score at this point is to read and answer question 81 correctly. You know, like I don't have to worry about bubbling in the remaining ones because as we just saw, if I go bubbling in the remaining questions randomly on a fair test, that's not going to improve my score at all. You know, it's kind of 50 50 shot of whether to go up or down. Whereas, if I answer question 81 correctly, that will bring my score up. So the, um, the quarter point penalty is really about reducing necessary gamesmanship and making it so that you don't need to worry about how much time is left. You don't need to do these goofy tricks. You can just answer questions one by one until they make you put your pencil down. And you can trust that like, there's nobody in the room who's gonna unfairly get a better score than you because they're gaming the system in some way. I guess that's really the core of the argument. If you have a quarter point penalty, then the test is more resistant to that kind of gaming. That, that particular game doesn't work against that test. Whereas if you don't have the quarter point penalty, then the people who know that trick are gonna use it and are gonna get a higher score than they, um, than they deserve, right? They're being, they're being rewarded for being good test takers, as we say, rather than for knowing the material. And that's, you know, that's not right. Um, anyway, um, I, I hope you've you found this a, a compelling argument and that it helps you to correctly select um, tests with penalties in the future when you have that option. Um, I guess as an addendum, I'll also mention that um, there's another nice thing about these, about these uh, tests with uh, quarter point penalties, which is that if you can, uh, if you can eliminate an answer choice, or if you have a, if you have a, you know, like a reasonable feeling that, uh, oh, it's somewhat likely that the correct answer here is C, right? Whatever, that kind of thing. Um, then on a test like that, you still get credit for guessing. Um, I, I mentioned this because some people think that it works the other way, but it, it really doesn't. If um, I guess what I'm saying is, right, we've, we've already said that if you're guessing randomly, then a quarter point penalty means you're not going to get any points at all. But if you're guessing in a biased way, right, in other words, if you actually do have some feeling about what the right answer is, so you're kind of in between, right? You don't, you don't know what the right answer is, but you have a hunch and your hunches are often right, right? You know part of the material, you can make good guesses, that kind of thing. Then uh, on a test with a quarter point penalty, on average, you'll wind up getting more than a random number right, which means on average, you'll wind up getting, um, you'll, you'll get more positive points than negative points from your guessing, which again, is totally fair and is exactly how it should be. Um, so that even if your strategy does involve making educated guesses at some point, quarter point penalty doesn't get in your way at all. It's still to your advantage um, to make your educated guesses. It's um, the, the only difference is that without that penalty, there comes a point in the middle of the test where you have to go, you have to avoid um, unanswered questions, uh, which again, is just kind of crazy from my point of view. Anyway, um, feel free to throw some comments in here. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to follow up, um, but I hope you found that helpful. And um, I'll look forward to seeing you around um, whatever channel you're seeing this video on. Have a good one.